So today I want to take a deep dive into Tankar Ali. I want to see its effectiveness and how good it is based off of a meta analysis that we're going to look into. And then we'll kind of look into the individual studies as well to kind of get an idea of if the results are actually reliable from what we found in the meta analysis or are they pulled together, you know, inconsistently or incorrectly. And obviously Tankar Ali has gotten a lot of recognition lately because of, you know, Andrew Huberman and being on the Joe Rogan podcast and a lot of other health and wellness and bodybuilder people talking about Tankar Ali as a natural supplement to boost testosterone. So even though I made a video on this previously, there were a lot of small studies that I went into. So today we're going to look into a meta-analysis, which kind of pulls together a bunch of studies and to see what the overall effect of Tomcat Alley is. So let's go ahead and look into some studies. Now, the first one I'm going to look into is not really a meta-analysis. This one is titled Efficacy of Tomcat Alley on Erectile Function Improvement, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomized Controlled Trials. So something that I found in the paper and I found it kind of interesting and surprising was that erectile dysfunction is an important sexual health problem worldwide with an estimated prevalence of 52% among men aged 40 to 70 years old. Now, obviously, that's a pretty wide age range. Now, I want to say that the majority of men under 50 years old do have erectile dysfunction. I'm sure the older men in this population group are skewing the results to be majority of men in that age range to have erectile dysfunction. Now, let's look at the design of this study. So, they found 342 articles that had some kind of relation to research on Tonkat Ali, but from there, they excluded 340 of them because they were not randomized controlled trials. So, they only included two randomized controlled trials here for this meta analysis. So they basically threw out 99% of the articles they found on Tankar Ali because they didn't meet their inclusion criteria. And, and I think they only had around 139 participants total for this study. Here are the two studies. One is by Udani and one is by Ismail. The Udani's population was 40 to 65 years old, healthy American males with stable heterosexual relationships. The Tankar Ali dose was 200 milligrams, but they also included 100 milligrams of polygonominus. And in the study, they mentioned that this is an antioxidant, so it should not really have any effect on testosterone levels, but they couldn't exactly rule that out because they're not 100% sure. So for this study, we could assume that any effect on testosterone was probably because of the Tonkar Ali and not this other substance, but we can't be entirely 1000% sure just to keep that in mind. So from, the, from there, they had a control group which had an identical tablet and the outcome of interest was an erectile dysfunction score at week six and week 12 compared to baseline. And the test they used to identify that was the IIEF5, which is the International Index of Erectile Function. Now, the other one was the Ismail test and this had 30 to 55 year old healthy Malay males. The Tonkar Ali used was a 300 milligram Feist the capsule and it was a matching control and then from there the ed score at week six and week 12 compared to baseline and this one was the iie 515 so basically just really quick to sum up the results from the study they wrote in this meta-analysis we did not find a significant effect of tonkat ali extract on erectile dysfunction but the good thing is also in terms of safety outcomes safety outcomes were reported in both studies and no significant differences in adverse events were found between treatment and placebo groups so basically from this study they didn't find any kind of increase in scores for the erectile dysfunction scores so no improvement there and no adverse events. So it was safe, but it was not deemed to be effective from this study. Now let's look at another meta-analysis, which is titled Uricoma Longifolia Improves Serum Total Cholesterol in Men, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Clinical Trials. Now this one both included healthy males and hypogonadic males, which is basically diagnosed by having less than 300 nanograms per deciliter. Usually has to be with symptoms, but not necessarily just a low testosterone level by itself can be indicative of hypogonadism. So like the other study, let's quickly go to the study design. So they screened 387 articles on Tunkat Ali, and they kind of excluded a bunch of them, just like the other one, all the way down to only five randomized controlled trials that were included in this meta-analysis. So they basically threw out 382 trials, again, about 99% of them, because for whatever reason, either they were, you know, Tonkat Ali with a micronutrient or they were Tonkat Ali with a rat study, they were in a human study, or it wasn't a randomized controlled trial or whatever the case is. At the end of the day, they found five clinical trials that matched their criteria. So basically, here are the five studies that were included in this meta-analysis. Um, this is basically just telling you the risk of bias. So red obviously means high bias, the green means low risk, and yellow means a little bit of bias. So as we can see, this Chan one has the highest risk of bias. So we want to kind of keep that in mind when we're looking at the results for that study to see what effect it has um, on the overall pool. Okay, so now let's go over the results from this meta-analysis. So the first one we'll look at is the CHAN study. So the double-blind controlled trial, healthy 18 to 30-year-old men with no diagnosis of hypogonadism versus controls. The dose was 600 milligrams per day for only two weeks though, so not a very long time, but we do see a big increase in testosterone by 122 points versus a placebo, which actually had a decrease, which is probably just due to CHAN, something really crazy there. Now, p-value here was not reported for some reason, but if we look into the study 
itself, we can see that there is p-values reported and there is a p-value for that increase in testosterone of 0.001, which means that it is statistically significant. And free testosterone also increased by 3.2, which means that it's statistically significant from this p-value, but no difference in sex hormone binding globulin because again, the p-value is above 0.05, which means it's not significant. We're looking for p-values less than 0.05, which means that it is statistically significant and the differences are because of our supplementation or our treatment and not just due to chance or something random. Now that the tail study had men that had an androgen deficiency, and so this is patients with adrenal deficiency from 40 to 59 years old. One of them was without exercise, one of them was with exercise. The one with exercise, we're not going to pay attention to because we're looking for just Tunkat Ali's effects. And from here, we can see that a p-value of less than 0.05, which is good. That means that the results were statistically significant. And we can see a total testosterone increase of around 122 points, which is a pretty decent amount. So doses of Tunkat Ali at 200 milligrams for six months did show a big increase in total testosterone levels. Now let's look at the Chinapin study, which had healthy volunteers with hypogonadism, either 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams. Both of them did show an increase in total testosterone levels with a p-value less than 0.05. Now for this one, I want to actually open up the study itself and look into it that way. So if you look at the 200 milligram versus placebo at week eight and week four, we can see an increase in total testosterone, whereas we do not see in any increase in free testosterone at any point. None of it is statistically significant. All of the p-values are above 0.05, which means it's not statistically significant, which means that it could have been due to chance, any difference that we see. And if we look at the total increase from baseline all the way up until week 12, which was also statistically significant, I forgot to mention, but the baseline was 200.5 nanograms per deciliter. And then at week 12, after 200 milligrams of supplementation, it went up to 225. So only a 25 point increase in testosterone levels over the span of 12 weeks. Not very high or beneficial results there. And that's only in total testosterone. No difference was found in free testosterone. No difference was found in sex hormone binding globulin as well. So it didn't decrease. All those p-values are again, not significant. But patients did report that after four weeks, they did feel better based on the AMS and FSS questionnaires. The patients did feel better on both the 100 milligram and the 200 milligram dose of Tunkat Ali. So in terms of symptoms and it's overall feeling better, patients did report that they did feel better. However, in terms of biomarkers and testosterone levels and sex hormone binding globulin and all that, there was no difference found from Tonkat Ali. So it could have been just a placebo effect of why these patients are feeling better or something else is going on from the Tonkat Ali that's making them feel better. It's probably not from the increase in testosterone. So now that we looked into the individual studies on Tonkat Ali, it's like at the pooled total main effects of Tonkat Ali overall from all the studies combined. From there, we can see on the left side, graph A is healthy males, no difference from supplementation with Tonkat Ali. Whereas on the right side, it's the hypogonadism males. And these did show an effect from Tonkat Ali. There was an increase in total testosterone levels. But as we saw from some of these studies, only total testosterone increased and not really free testosterone or a decrease in sex hormone binding globulin. And that is something that is very important because we don't just want an increase in total testosterone. We mostly want to increase in free testosterone because that's what has the bioavailability and has the effects on the body. If total testosterone is high and so is sex hormone binding globulin, that means that the testosterone is bound to that protein. It can't have an effect on the body. It needs to be free and roaming around in the blood without being bound to something because that's how it has its effects on the body where it can get to the receptors. So we want an increase in total testosterone, an increase in free testosterone, and a decrease in sex hormone binding globulin for the most optimal effects. None of these studies showed results like that. We didn't see anything like that for most of them. We only saw an increase in total testosterone. So that is something to be cautious of and aware of. If you want to supplement with Tonkat Ali, you're probably not going to see a massive boost in testosterone levels, first of all. And second of all, it's probably not going to be in free testosterone or the lowering of sex hormone binding globulin. They might feel better overall and have more energy and feel like the supplement is doing something and that's fine and that's great especially because there is no adverse events or long-term safety things associated with this supplement that we have found currently from all the research so it is generally safe so it is something that you can take even if it is just a placebo effect it's probably not going to have a huge effect on your health long term just make sure you're kind of cycling with it off and on to avoid anything that we don't know currently about tongue Ali. so you're not kind of exposing yourself too much for too long but of course anytime you want to take a supplement always refer to your healthcare provider and let them know because your medical history might have something where the doctor is not comfortable allowing you to take Tonkat Ali. So always keep that in mind and don't just kind of take things on your own without consulting someone first because you want to make sure that it is okay for you to take. So as we saw here from Tonkat Ali, not a huge effect on total testosterone, not much effect on free testosterone either, and pretty much no effect on sex hormone binding globulin. So I wouldn't say that Tonkat Ali is something that I would go to for the purpose of increasing testosterone, especially if I had severe hypogonadism or if I was an otherwise healthy male. Maybe 
maybe I would try cycling it off and on for a few weeks to see how I feel on the supplement, but I wouldn't take it with the purpose of increasing my testosterone. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.